Okay, boys and girls, how's the lighting here? My hands look pale. Anyway, um, we're going to go ahead and continue with chapter two of our book, Diva and Flea. We said this takes place, as we said, in uh, Paris, France, Paris, France. We said that we saw that Diva basically is a kind of a well cultured, you know, brought up type of dog. She lives in an apartment complex. Her mistress takes care of this apartment complex. Uh, flea, on the other hand, is kind of like a, an alley cat, as we say in English. He's a flaneur. A flaneur, again, means someone who strolls about, looking about. Doesn't really have a, a uh, how can I say, for him, he doesn't really have a place to stay. No occupation, no job. So basically, he just kind of walks around. So it's pretty good. And we saw in Chapter 1, um, actually, we met them in Chapter 1 and, and it talked about what they do. And like that, there she is. And we saw also um, Le Flamme, uh, Fli, right there, the alley cat, having a good time. Okay, so it's pretty much uh, time for chapter two, and it's called The Courtyard. And there it is. Chapter two, The Courtyard. This says Metropolitan. And we see, it looks like Flea. The Metropolitan is basically the underground. It is the subway. So it's an underground train. Now we have those in the United States. In fact, in Los Angeles, we do have one underground train, um, or several, I should say, believe it or not, we do. Uh, there are quite a few in New York, uh, also places like um, London um, and other cities. So in Paris, they have a Metropolitan. The, the Metropolitan is the train that goes underground. And again, chapter two, the courtyard. And it says, and of course, you can always look at the picture. I'm kind of reading, but you know. One afternoon, Flea was having a particularly good time flaneuring. The day was barely half over, and he had already discovered a stairwell that led deep under the streets of Paris. There, giant rooms on wheels would suddenly appear and release large groups of people. So thought Flea. That's where people come from. Now again, boys and girls, what are those giant rooms on wheels? They're trains. And we do talk, we do call them train cars, but he thinks they're like, you know, giant rooms on wheels. Oh, he's a cat. What can I say? Oh, what's going out there? It looks like uh, somebody is chasing him out of the, it looks like a butcher shop. Yeah, in fact it is. And it says, Later, Flea found himself sitting in the sun, watching people who were also thinking, oh, excuse me, also sitting in the sun, watching even more people sitting in the sun. Okay. Everyone except for Flea was drinking tiny cups of something they called uh, coffee. This is pretty much what people do in Paris, France. Actually, it's café. In English, coffee. So it's coffee. He thinks, well, it's coffee. Actually, it's café. In French. This is, that's pretty much what people do in Paris, France. They do drink a lot of coffee, those Frenchmen and women, they do. Then inside Flea's favorite store, he saw a woman drop a giant piece of salami smack onto the floor. <laughs> Flea pounced and snatched the salami before the man with the broom could even chase him out, an event that was both unusual and delicious. Get out of here, cat. And it says, plat de jour. That's basically the plate of the day, more or less. And if that weren't enough, that very same day, Flea happened to wander past the courtyard at 11 Avenue La Plaie, where he saw Diva for the first time. Hmm, interesting. Okay, let's see what he does. As soon as Flea saw the small dog, he was captivated. As soon as Diva saw the large cat, she yelped and ran away. I thought they were going to like each other, even though they're different species, but that's okay. Flea laughed because it was kind of funny. He had seen many funny things in his life, but he'd never seen such a small dog yelp with such a loud voice. After that, Flea would make sure that most afternoons he just happened to flaneur 
right by the courtyard of 11 Avenue La Plaie. It was fun watching the small dog yelp and run away. This went on for many days. Flea would flaneur by, the small dog would yelp and run away. Flea would laugh. It was almost too good to be true. Then one day, Diva didn't yelp or run away. Instead, she looked right at Flea's big face and asked, Are you trying to hurt my feelings? Flea had never thought about it like that. And I wonder why she would ask him that question. Now let's continue with chapter three. I wasn't going to. I was going to talk to Mr. Bird about maybe asking him to uh, do some chores over here. But now let's go and read chapter three. Okay, toi, toi, three. And I see a, a mouse right there. The next day, Diva trotted into the courtyard, expecting to see the large cat and to hear his loud laugh. But the cat was not there. It was quiet. Diva was surprised at how empty the courtyard felt without a cat sticking his big head through the gate. Ho, 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 mon chéri. Then she noticed the courtyard wasn't completely empty. There was a small dead mouse near the front step. I don't think she appreciates that. Diva looked at the mouse and thought for a moment. Then she called out as loudly as she could, <gasps> Who left this mouse by my doorstep? <gasps> a small voice, hiding in the bushes, replied, Me, moi. Whose voice is that? I think it is Flea's. Well, oh, okay. It was Flea's voice. Diva was surprised a cat that big could have a voice that small. That does happen in life sometimes, even with people. The cat came out from behind the bushes and walked to the edge of the gate. I did not mean to hurt your feelings, he said, uh, so I brought you a mouse. You brought me a mouse? asked Diva. Uh, to show how sorry I am, he replied. Diva looked at the mouse and thought for a moment. Then she walked over to Flea and said, that is the nicest thing anyone has ever done for me. But uh, in the future, bring me a small piece of ribbon, okay? Okay? Flea laughed. And this time, so did Diva. Mm, C'est bon. Next we'll be going, oh, Le Premier Antoct. And I'll tell you later what that means in French. It's kind of similar in Spanish, not exactly. Um, okay, boys and girls, so that's pretty good. Um, let me see uh, what's going on today. We got stuff, a lot of stuff going on today, uh, definitely. And then, uh, of course, let me see. I'm trying to think. Oh, yeah, we've also got, uh, during the week, we've got uh, Art with Ms. Federici. We've got also, um, I guess, science. Uh, we may do health instead of social studies. A lot of stuff going on, you know, as far as that. Okay. So I'll be seeing you uh, later, and um, make sure, yeah, you check what you're supposed to do today. And, you know, like I've said, sometimes you may say, hey, you know what, I'd rather do um, math before language arts. Okay, in school, we didn't have that choice usually, but like I said, at home, ask your parents, or if you have a sitter, ask him or her, or whatever, and if it's okay, you can do it. Okay, so we're saying goodbye. Uh, right now, just temporarily to Diva and Flea, and there's the garbage truck making the noise again. Sort of like what Flea's used to, all that garbage and everything. Poor guy. <laughs>